come just now to say thank you, okay. You're not just a part of my life, but my everything. Your love reaches way down deep within, as is human understanding. There will always be a song for you, I see. One word alone just can't express my heart's desire. a part of my life but my everything your love reaches way down deep within it has its human understanding there will always be a song I see what word
opportunity we have today to give him praise, hallelujah, and to, to expect from him great things. Let the church glorify God one more time. Glory, as we turn our Bibles to Psalm number 34. Glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah, glory. Jesus. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fear. They looked unto him and were lightened. Their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and they saved him out of all his trouble. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye saints, for there is no one to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desired life and loveth many days that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil, and thy lips from speaking God. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and persuade. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. And his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. To cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry. And the Lord heareth. And delivered them out of all their trouble. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart. And saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Hallelujah. But the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Hallelujah. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trusted in him shall be desolate. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Come ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Glory to God today. We reverence the Lord. We honor him today as we are gathered to worship one more time. God has given us strength. Hallelujah. He has given us health. Hallelujah. And he has also given us the mind. As we are gathered here today, let us stay focused on the Lord and let us raise our expe expectations very high. For our God who delivers is here to deliver us today. Praise God wherever you are today, wherever you are. Amen. At home, at work, or right here in the sanctuary, please expect great things to happen. Because Jesus of Nazareth is right here with us today. Let the church say glory to God. Let the church say glory to God. Hallelujah. For our God is good. Hallelujah. The mission of Bethel Abundant Life Ministries is based on Jesus' commission to his disciples 
found in Matthew 28, 19, to make disciples of all nations. In obedience, therefore, we will seek the lost, endeavoring always to bring them in, grow them up, and send them out as witnesses to reach others for Christ. Additionally, Bethel Abundant Life Ministries will care carry out its mission through the fivefold ministries of apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, and tridimensionally through the ministry to the Lord, ministry to the saints, and ministry to the unseen. We will repeat our pledge together as an empowered people reaching others for Christ. We pledge to participate in the advancing of the kingdom of God even as we strive to maintain a Christ-centered life to the glory of God. Let the church glorify God right now. Hallelujah! Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. What a God we serve. What a God. Hallelujah. We are here today with great assurance. Amen. As we sing blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. If we have nothing else in this world. Hallelujah. We have Jesus. And as the songwriter penned his voice makes a difference. When he speaks. He relieved my troubled mind. For those of you of the Pentecostal hymnal is number 85. Blessed assured Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long.
we all of us saw. Hallelujah. Glory, you may be seated. Hallelujah. In the presence of the Lord. As he indwell us by his spirit. I honor the Lord today. I greet Bishop and Mother Thompson. Bishop Webb. And all the other officers of our church. Ministers. Workers. Visitors. Those of you who are viewing online. And participate in this worship. Greetings in the most holy and precious name, Jesus. Praise God. We are here today. Hallelujah. Because our God reigns. Hallelujah. And he has given us the assurance today. Hallelujah. He went on the cross of Calvary. Shed his blood to redeem all of us from our sins. And today we have an assurance. Let me see all those who have an assurance today. And you can sing it in song. You have an assurance. Hallelujah. Our God is a good God. Oh, glory. So again, let me welcome you to the house of God. Hallelujah. Where we have the liberty to praise God. Hallelujah. To lift up his name. It could have been worse today, brethren. It could have been worse. It could have been worse. Hallelujah. It could have been worse. You know, there are many persons this morning who wish they could praise God. Who wish they had a little air in their lungs. Ah, to give him praise. But we are so, 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 so grateful. Hallelujah. Let everyone that have breath give him a praise in the house. Oh, glory. Pull your hands up your side. And put them together and give God the glory. Oh, somebody said, well, I think of the goodness of Jesus. And all that he has done for me. My soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Praise God. It's good to see the saints and visiting friends who are here today. Amen. After a very trying week, challenging week, I'm sure. Praise God. But aren't we glad to be here today? Could you turn to somebody and smile with them? Yes, your eyes can smile. Let not the mask stop us from smiling. Amen. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done, for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, thank God for saving me, oh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus. personal testimony 
Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. When I think, I just have to think. Amen. Somebody said, count your blessings. Name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Praise God. Hallelujah. There's no room for complaining. Hallelujah. No room for murmuring. Praise God. Just think. Amen of what God has done. Praise God. And there'll be more than reason to celebrate. Hallelujah. It's offering time in the house of the Lord. Put your hands together. Amen. And we want to thank everyone for donating to the work of the ministry for the cause of the kingdom. Those of you who are viewing and not here present, we want to invite you to give to through your cash app to our Zelle account uh, by using the number 321-914-8632. That is 321-914-8632. Praise God. Or you can write a check to our church to BAM, B-A-L-M, the address. You can mail it to 10... 81 Port Malabar Boulevard, Palm Bay, Florida, 32905. Amen. Or you can go to our website and you can just click on the website is BAM USA, B A L M U S A dot org. Click on the donate button and then you will be able to give. You can be assured. That whatever you give to our church is well accounted for. It's used for the work of the ministry. So have confidence that whenever you give or donate to the work of the ministry of BAM, then it is used for the glory of God. Don't hesitate to give. Give to the glory of God. Hallelujah. I feel like pressing my way. I feel like pressing my way, I'm on my way to glory. We have the feeling to press. You may be seated. It's good that we have the feeling to press. Hallelujah. You know, since this pandemic started, so many have lost even the feeling and the desire. Yes. True. Amen. For us to have that feeling and desire, I would say it's a blessing. And I want to say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah! That I still have the desire. I think all of us should join together and agree. Thank you, Jesus. Put your hands together. Ah, because some have started to run the race. Hallelujah! But they have stopped somewhere along the line through discouragement. 
Hallelujah, despair. But I feel like pressing my way. Hallelujah. Yeah, glory to God. Press along, saints. Hallelujah. It's pressing times. Again, the forces of darkness that are pushing against us. But God being our helper, we can press. Can you just press for me? Put your hand up. Come on. Press. Come on. Press. Press. When you feel depressed, just press. When you feel oppressed, press. And when you feel suppressed, then press. Oh, glory to God. I feel something going on. I invite everyone to stand at this time. His voice does make a difference. God has blessed this church and continues to bless his people immensely. He is always a word for us and we can rely upon the Lord to feed us with the finest of wheat. Praise God. As we stand and await the word, hallelujah, fresh from the oven of God. A fresh bread for the moment. I ask everyone to sit in prayer as the Lord, through his servant, Elder Everett Barnett, speak to his people. Let us pay attention, everyone. Let us arrest our minds and our thoughts to focus on the Lord. And as we wait for that word, let us prayerfully, prayerfully accept what the Lord has for us. God bless you. It's my pleasure to present to you as God's messenger for the morning. None other again, I said, than Elder Everett Barnett in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. To God be the glory. Great things he hath done. Here we are this morning. We have life. And we are going to say thanks to the Lord. Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Those in front of me in the sanctuary. You may be seated. Giving God thanks this morning. For his love and for his mercies. Hallelujah. We don't want to take anything for granted. There are so many, as a pastor said this morning, are not as blessed as we are. And they have much difficulty in even breathing. And some this morning, they are not even here. They, made, they were ushered out over the course of the night. But we give God thanks that we are here this morning and able to give the Lord thanks. So I say thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. For me, you can thank him for yourself. But I'm thanking him for me. For giving me this honored privilege this morning. Hallelujah. To be able to speak to you, his people, to our pastor. And uh, uh, Bishop Widak this morning. To our council members and to uh, other ancillary staffers. In your various places, we give God thanks for you, for the work that you've continued to do, for the mind that you still have. There are so many others this morning who are, who will say that they are afraid to come out and to be a part of the fellowship of, you know, we, are not, we must not neglect the assembling of ourselves together. And some, some are still afraid, but we pray for them. Hallelujah. We pray for them. Pray their strength. And we know definitely that some have lost the desire altogether. And there have been researches that have been done by various organizations that have showed that there are so many people who have turned away from the Christian pathway over the course of the pandemic. So many. So many have lost focus. So many have not centered on Christ. 
So many have said that when it's all over, I'm not going back either. But let's pray for them that the Lord will touch because it's only the Lord Jesus Christ who has the power to touch hearts, to change hearts. Praise the Lord to our viewers on YouTube and Facebook. We give God thanks for you. Thank you for watching and for inviting your friends to be part of this service. And in fact, we have several services per week. And you can use this as a tool for evangelism by inviting somebody to be part of these services. Uh, one service that, uh, a service that you may want to invite your friends to is our midday manna service. And that is Mondays to Fridays at midday on our conference line. And uh, so many people have been blessed by these services over the past few months. And uh, we are urging you that if you find it possible, it takes up a, a little bit of your lunchtime. But certainly, you are going to be refreshed. You're going to be blessed. Some have such busy schedules that it's, a, it's an opportunity just to take some time away from your busy schedule and to say, thank you, Lord, for being with me. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you for the time that you have allowed me to spend with your people to be refreshed in your word. Praise the Lord Jesus. And so we invite you to be part of those services at midday, on Monday to Friday. And of course, we do have our Bible study this evening. Uh, we call it Sunday school. We used to call it Sunday school, right? But it's a real Bible study. And uh, that will be at uh, 6 o'clock. And uh, at, at Tuesday evenings, there is also Bible study. Our pastor comes in and he brings a word for us. Praise the Lord. So we are not just a Sunday morning only. We are taking the message to the world. Hallelujah. And this is a tool for evangelism, and we ask you to help us to spread the word. Praise the Lord Jesus. So many over the years have said, well, I do not know what my purpose in life is. And man has this quest for knowledge. Man is always trying to find out, you know, more. Want to find out, well, what is it that I'm able to do better and bigger? I want to make sure that I'm not in the same groove. I'm not on, just on this one plane. But I want to move forward. I want to move up. And so we give God thanks this morning that his word, it's in his word. We have to be found in the word. From Romans chapter 6, reading from verse 16 through to 19, I, just a few short verses. It said, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. He said, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members, servants to, to righteousness, unto holiness. Praise the Lord. And another little, uh, another two verses I want to read from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 and 19. It says, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now which shall spring forth, shall ye, know it? shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Praise the Lord. 
So as I mentioned before, man has a quest for a desire for knowledge and to know what his purpose in life is. What is the meaning of life for him? What is it that he is required to do? There is one quotation that has been, that has been uh, uh, attributed to one Dennis Rainey. He says, we cannot, Lord, thy purpose see, but all is well that's done by thee. And so there is, always this, there is always this looking for what is the purpose? What is the meaning of my life? What am I here for? What shall I be doing? And we can see where it all started in Genesis chapter 1. In verse 27, we are told that the Lord said, and God said, uh, well, and God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and a female created he them. So right from the very start, that's where it all began. Who made us and why? And so man has been looking and searching and seeking. Even today, man is still seeking and searching. There are many people who are going from place to place. They cannot be satisfied because they are not seeming to find what it is that will satisfy them. But we know that the Lord Jesus Christ, he saves, he keeps, and he satisfies. And when we seek to get to that position where the Lord, we are centered, or everything is centered on the Lord Jesus Christ, then we will have some measure of satisfaction. So we need for him to, we need to be focused on him. Focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. Man, we, are, we see is designed to be forward looking, right? Physically forward looking. Anything that is going to be happening behind us, somebody else has to have our back. But we are designed to look forward. Go forward, look forward, look ahead. We cannot be successful trying to walk forward and, and looking back. Something tragic is going to happen. So we are to move forward. We are to go forward. We are to look ahead. Hallelujah. Because we need to progress. We need to move ahead. We need to move up. We need to move on. Or whatever the terms that we, that we find that is most appropriate in the time. That is what we need to, 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 uh, to, to do. We have memory. And I was thinking about that and said we have memory. And memory deals with things that have happened and are in the past. But it also is to guide how we approach what is happening to us now and what could happen down the road. So we cannot just say, well, memory we, is just for the things of the past. No, it guides what happens now. Because when, when, when that power of recall is used and they said, okay, I did that and that happened. So therefore, I will not go that direction again. I have learned that lesson. I will not do that again. So that is where memory plays its part to help to guide us into a better way of doing things, faster, quicker, whatever, and or things to avoid. We are told that since, well, well, since we have that idea to look ahead, and we also have that, that, that memory to reflect on things and, 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 and the, that have gone, that that is where our problem is. It's a problem of balance. We need to be in balance. So too much relevance on the past, too much reflection on the past makes us irrelevant. We need to be focused on, yes, that happened, but I'm not going to live my life by being completely 
bogged down with what has happened then. We see in Isaiah that we're, we're urged. He said, don't dwell on the past. Remember ye not the former things. And how difficult that is. Because if the memory is supposed to be there to help to guide us as to what we should do, then certainly we don't want to forget everything that is gone. We don't want to be able, we don't want to have a situation where the memory is wiped out. Because when the memory is wiped out, there are certain things that we will not be able to do. We won't remember to how to chew our food. That's a memory process. Even just how to put the, put the food in the mouth, chew it up, swallow. Some people get to that point where they can't even do that. And we think that, oh my God. It is so, it is so you know, hard to think of, 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 of ourselves being in that position. But it happens. And so we want to realize that when it says remember not the former things, it is not to wipe our brains clean. And, and, and said, well, only if what happens from here on is relevant. No. But how we remember those things is going to make the difference with how we behave. Because if every time I look at you, I see, I, I, you know, I remember something bad. Something hurtful that you did to me. And how I would very much like to get back at you. Then you know life is going to be miserable for me. It is going to be. Because I am held captive by those thoughts. I am not able to move on. I am not able to forgive. I am not able to, 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 to say, well brother or sister, you did hurt me. I did feel that way at the time. But you know. I no longer feel the same way toward you. I felt as if I, when I, you know, was hurt at the time, I could have just did something really badly to you. But somehow, the Lord has brought me through it. We have to allow the Lord to take us through. If we are going to fight our battles or try to fight our battles ourselves, we are going to be failures. We are going to be held captive to all of the things that we ought not to be held captive by. But we are given another, another, another way to look at things. He said, neither consider the things of old. So it, it's almost as if they said, well, there are certain things that you're, we really ought to be trying to clear out of our minds. It's like some people... They inherit some things on the will, and it does not do you any good. It doesn't do us any good to go claim those inheritances. Some old hurts, what your grandfather did to your grandmother, and your, and, and your uncle, auntie, and friend, and all of those kinds of things, old hurts that have been passed down the line through generations, leave them alone. Leave those things. Forget those things. Put those things behind. Neither consider them because they're not profitable. Not profitable at all. And so this morning, I really want to talk about, Lord, renew me. Renew me. You see, we are the children of Israel. They easily forgot God's goodness. Some, of the, some things we ought not to forget. And we are going to forget them because there's so much happening around us. We're going to forget things because the multiple things that are happening around us. Something has just come and just knocked that out of our brain. Let's push that aside. And we are now focused on this thing. This is a new, new thing. But if we replay some of the things that have been good, to, how the Lord has been good to us, how he has brought us through, if we just bring them back, 
to our remembrance and play them over and sing the songs of Zion over and over again and praise God and say, thank you, Jesus. This is what you did for me, Lord. And we think that some, some things are just too small to give God thanks for. They're not too small. In everything, he says, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. So it's not just the big things. Oh, I got $50,000. I got a windfall. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So you're not thankful for the, for the uh, minimum wage job that you now have? Yes, you could always do it some more. But we have to be thankful for what we have. It is going to be an indication to the Lord whether or not he can trust us with more too. There have been people who have been quite successful and they have, and they have attributed their success to the fact that, well, when I had little, I didn't spare to, to, to serve the Lord. And now that I have a little more, I keep giving to the Lord. I keep trusting the Lord. I, and it's not just money. It's time. It's talent. It's treasure. It's how we, how we see ourselves as working with and for the Lord. Can he find us to use us? Can he find us in the situations when he wants us to, to be used by him in the kingdom? Because if he can't find us, we are not of much use to him. So we see we are the children of Israel. They easily forgot God's goodness. They became accustomed and even adapted themselves to the life of captivity. But they had their leeks. They had garlics and they had the onions and they had their meat. And So when they were, were on their way out and they had a little a little hardship and things were not as plentiful. They said, would to God. They never considered that their freedom and they were, they, was so precious. They wanted the other things, the things that perish. We ought to be so careful about what it is that we remember with just fondness. And as it were, just daydream on and oh my God, when I was back in the world, Oh, I had money. When I was back in the world, I didn't have to suffer like this. I could have snapped my fingers and it would happen. But you know what else you had to pay. You know the price, the real price you had to pay. And so the Lord wants us to be renewed in our mind. Know the things that we really need to value. And what value we ought to place on them. We must guard against getting adjusted to this world's systems. Because it's just a matter of time. We hear so much on the radio. We see so much on the TV. We see so many of our friends doing it. And as it were, getting away. That we said, well, the Lord is not going to strike me if I do that. So therefore, I will, I will take my chances. And we ought not to be doing that because to him that knoweth and doeth it not, to him it is sin. We ought not to, we ought not to sin willfully because the Lord has given us the good sense and has enabled us to sort things out, hallelujah, through a renewed mind. A renewed mind. But change is possible. I think that's where the, 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 the scripture comes in Romans chapter, chapter 6 this morning. Change is possible because it says in time past. We know to whom, when, when, who, when we yield ourselves, to whom we yield ourselves, then we are their servants. And we have to obey. That's what servants do. They obey. They don't say, well, I think I should do it this way. Or I don't think that's a good idea at all. Servants obey. He said, but God be thanked that you were 
servants of sin. Oh, hallelujah. Let's thank him this morning. Let's thank him this morning. If we have started on that road, that it can be said we were servants of sin. We are not perfect now. We, are not have, we have not reached. We have not gotten to that place where we want to be and where we ought to be. But we have made the commitment. What does the songwriter say? I have made my choice forever. I will walk with Christ my Lord. Not from him my soul shall sever. And that's going to be a, that's a big challenge. Because many times some things come in and just knock us out. Knock us off. Knock us off the trap. But we can make it. We can make it. Hallelujah. Change is possible. He were the servants of sin. But he have obeyed from the heart. And our heart has to be in this. If we are to be renewed in our minds, in our hearts. Our heart has to be yielded to the Lord Jesus Christ. You have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. Being then made free from sin... You became the servants of righteousness. Change is possible. Some people may look at you and say, well, you're too far gone. You're too messed up. You're not at that place where I know the Lord would want to take you or use you. And, they, you know, there are so many people who will decry one another. We ought to look at ourselves. When we start to criticize and decry each other, let us look at ourselves and see where we are because constant self-examination is necessary. On this pathway, we must daily examine ourselves. Where we are. Are we on the right path? Is it on the path that we just figure that, well, yes, this is, this is good enough. This is good enough. I, I, I won't go too far. I, I am on the way. I got baptized in Jesus' name. Yes, that's good enough for me. That's what they, they were stressing at that service, and I did that. So, therefore, I'll be all right. But what about going to the next level? What about being filled with the Holy Ghost? What about living that life? That renewed life in Jesus. Sadly, too many, too many people, and from time to time we look at the list. I don't know if you have one, but we do look at the list from time to time as to how many persons were baptized in this, this ministry, this fellowship. And they are nowhere around now. And it was before pandemic as well. But even since pandemic, some more have been added to the list. And we just got to pray. Just got to pray, pray, pray. Because they never gave themselves an opportunity to move from one level of being baptized to being to the, going to the next level through careful Bible study and fasting and praying and, and, and counseling. They never gave themselves that chance. They figure that, well, it was enough. I did what is, what is required of me, and that is all right. It's not all right to cut ourselves short, to sell ourselves short in Jesus Christ. It's not enough to just get a little touch. But touch me, Lord. Touch me. No, I want. You need, we need the whole bucket to beard us, the car to, be, to, to cover us from head to toe. Pockets of blessings. One songwriter said it took a miracle to put the stars in place. It took a miracle. But the greatest miracle of all was when he saved my soul, cleansed and made me whole. It was a miracle of love and of grace. 
when we see what we are, when we understand what we are through self-examination, then we realize that we are not less than. We are not to treat ourselves as less than or either. Because the Lord wants us to go from, from level to level to level, always advancing. He wants the best for us. For I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper. Plans to be in good health. Plans to advance. Plans to do good to others. All of those good things. Those are what he has for us. But when we are not achieving them, then we are treating ourselves as less than. Oh, I can't do that. Brother John. Brother John is well able to do that. Brother John has the resources to do that. Sister Mary and Sister Sue, they can do that. I can see where they can do that. But what about me? Are we looking at ourselves and saying, well, I can be renewed in my mind and I can achieve the things that the Lord will have for me to, to achieve? I can do the work that he wants me to do in his kingdom? Constant evaluation. And the right attitude. We must have the right attitude. Because in the last days, just a little, sometimes we, we, we you know, we are now in the, in the pandemic. And somehow things may have changed a bit for us. And we're looking at this, oh, it's so hard, it's so hard, we can't. And, and many times when we, when we come up on a difficulty, instead of running to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, the one who's able to take us through the situation, who one is able to take us through the, yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, is not, we are not the ones who are walking of our own strength. He's taking us through. And others are looking at us. And say, ah, that one looks good. I want that one. But when it, but Jesus is not saying, say, stop, stay back, stay back. It's not your time. It's not your time. He's taking care of us. Am I the only one who's happy this morning? Am I the only one who's glad this morning that he's taking care of me? He's taking care of me. The hour, the time I fall asleep, I don't know. The Lord alone knows. And he knows the time I will awake. What an awful, what an awesome thing. What an awesome thing. We can't put ourselves to sleep and wake up ourselves. We could take 20 tablets. God alone we must depend on. Hallelujah. We have to have the right attitude. And it helps us. That attitude helps us to prepare for the future. As in the last days, we are told, perilous times. Perilous times. Now what it says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, this know also that in the last days, Perilous times shall come. And I'm not saying that today is the last day. But we're one day closer to when the last day is than we were yesterday. So we have to realize that we have to go forward. And as we're going forward, we're going toward the last day. Are we prepared for those last days? In our minds, we have to be prepared for those last days. Because the Lord has said, of that day and of that hour, no man knows. So it's not any secret that somebody else has that is not revealed unto us. Nobody. None of those people who are saying, well, oh, this, this is going to happen on that day and the, the world will end on that day. They don't know. They don't know. Our constant evaluation will lead us to get the help that we need. 
Because there are times when we really need help, but we don't seek that help. In Luke chapter 15, that famous chapter, the lost coin and the lost boy, we call him the prodigal. He recognized his situation. He must have been evaluating his situation all along. When he had money, he had friends. When he had money, he had options. I don't want that for dinner this evening. I'll go over there and fix, get, get me something else. But when all the money was gone, he had no dinner and he had no options and he had no friends. The only option, none, none would give to him. But one said, all right, you want to do some, something, go, go look after my swine for me. So even the last thing that he figured he had, which was some dignity, he lost. But we see in, 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 in verse 17, and when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my father have bread? And not just bread, but bread enough and to spare. My father's hired servants have enough food and to spare. And I perish with hunger. Until we can come to that stark realization that on our own, we are not going to survive. We are not going to make it. Until we can come to that realization that we are social beings. We need each other. Dare any of us say that, oh, I don't need you. I don't need your call. I don't need your checking in with me. I don't need to hear from you. We run a risk of isolating ourselves, going off and wanting to be in a cave all by ourselves. And sometimes when we find ourselves in that kind of condition, we want to take it out on God. We want to blame God and say, God, you caused this to happen to me. So we must not get too mad sometimes at some of those people who would say, well, I don't want to hear from you. I don't want to see you. Where were you last week when I was going through my problem and all of, you know, all of that? You didn't know about the problem last week, but this week you're getting in touch with them to say, hey, how are you doing? I've been praying for you. You're on my mind and I'm, I've been praying for you. But, you know, they find somebody to offload on. And then that is when, no, we, are, we ought not to be going toe-to-toe -to -toe with them and saying, well, 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 no, we just say, okay, all right, sis, I continue to pray for you. All right, sir, I continue to pray for you. Because at the end of the day, something that you have nothing to do with, you're being blamed for, and it's coming out. Any of, any of you know that? Any of you had that kind of experience where somebody just dumped on you when it you had nothing to it had nothing to do with you, but you were there to receive it. And so we just say, Thank you, Lord, for the grace. Thank you for the grace, Lord. Hallelujah. As we examine ourselves, we realize that sometimes we not we are not the ones who are responsible for the the problems you are in. This, this is the prodigal. You know, the, the young man, he said, well, uh, I'm at home here and things kind of not exciting enough. So let me not wait until down the road I get my inheritance. Because what? My elder brother is going to be ahead of me anyway. So let me go and see if I can make life for myself. But his brain, his mind was not prepared for that. Run into problem. We can get into problems all by ourselves. But we ought to make sure that we can, we know that we can run to our father. 
He said in verse 18, I will arise and go to my father. And he already knows what he's going to say to him. He said, Father, I have sinned. Father, I have sinned. So many of us, we don't even want to use that word sin. Much less to take blame for something that we have done. Accountability is a big thing to God. We have to be held accountable and we have to hold ourselves accountable. Sometimes we even go too far. Because, you know, the enemy wants to say, well, you know, you're in this sorry state. And because of what you're in, you are going to suffer for, for, for a year. When the Lord has already dealt with it, when the moment you said, Father, I have sinned. Oh, God. The prodigal recognizes sorry state. His lack of basic necessities, food, fellowship, family, those basic things. He had none of those. He was separated from the support systems. He's, you know, as it were, he was isolated in a land far away. And I'm saying to somebody this morning, you feel like isolating yourself, going into a far country. Don't do it. Don't do it. Resolve to change. The Lord Jesus Christ, he will hear. And just like that father, that father, what that father did is like what the Lord would do. Songwriter said, are you weary? Are you heavy hearted? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. There's somebody who we can run to. Our heart is heavy. We can run to Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. We're weary. We're, we're, as it were, beating, 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 beating the air. And we're not seeing the results. Hallelujah. Tell it to Jesus. We have a father who cares. We have a father who cares. He understands what is going on in us more than we understand it ourselves. And so he's there and he's able to revive, refresh, and renew. Lord, renew me. Amen. Hallelujah. We're told to cast all our cares on Jesus. But there is hope. There is hope. There is hope this morning. There is hope. Ah, the prodigal's life was repurposed, was renewed. Hallelujah. I was given new meaning and that was done publicly too. When the father saw him coming, despite the, 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 the timidity that was in the son, despite him rehearsing that speech all along, the father ran to meet him and he had compassion on him. He saw and, and there was a public outcry. This, my son, was dead and is alive again. Hallelujah. They would have been happy for him because so many of those same servants would have seen him looking out each day. They would have seen him and said, oh, it's that boy that is gone that is looking for him. Don't he, doesn't he realize that that boy must be dead by now? We haven't heard from him this long time and we haven't heard anything about him. He's gone. Why doesn't he stop worrying himself? Why doesn't he stop sending up his pressure? Why doesn't he come and enjoy life? Move on, move on, move on. And you have a son or a daughter that is gone a foul, run a foul, gone astray. It gives you no joy. You just give up. We must understand that it's God alone that can change hearts. God alone that can change hearts. But we cannot give up. In our quiet times, we must pray. We must put the situation to the, to the Lord and say, Lord, it is concerning to me. 
I would really love to see the change, Lord. I'd really love to see a change. But he said, give him a ring. Bring forth the best robe. He never said, bring forth his, his robe, his old robe. Bring forth the best. He deserves the best. And when we are renewed in the Lord, we deserve the best. And the Lord is pouring out the best for us. Hallelujah. Put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Here it is that here we left, we left home all properly decked out. And now we are getting coming back home. Less than, much less than, no shoes, no ring, no clothes that is befitting, but God. He's the renewer. He's the one who will renew. He's the one who will revive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord promised. And his promises are sure. He said, behold, I will do a new thing. I will do a new thing. That's the turning point. When we decide that, well, something needs to give. And we, are, we and say we will arise and go to our father. Then, he said, I will do a new thing. Accountability is expected of us. But until we decide to, to, to really be accountable unto God, then it's not going to happen. Because within us, it's not that God is not doing his work. But within us, there is always something saying that, don't bother with that. The Lord doesn't want that. The Lord doesn't want to hear that. He wants to see you suffer some more. He wants to see you go through some more. He wants to see you go through some stuff. And because of that, we are obeying the enemy of our soul. And we become servants to the enemy of our soul. The Lord's promises are sure. They're not failing. He doesn't make idle promises. They're backed by action. Remember he made a way in the Red Sea through the Red Sea? He brought down the mighty armies. Armies that had horses and chariots. He brought them down. Is your enemy looking so big, so mighty, so powerful that somehow you're feeling a little bit intimidated? Well, our God, our God is big and is mighty. Hallelujah. And he's fighting our battles for us. He'll fight our battles for us. He said, I will do a new thing in you. I will do a new thing in you. Whatever you ask for, whatever you pray for, nothing will be denied. That's the, ex that's the full extent as to whether or not we want more than just this is up to us. But he said, nothing. Too armful. And but sometimes we just want a little, a little bit, a little bit. When all of this is available. In this dispensation of the new life. We see what the Lord said to Nicodemus. Hallelujah. In John chapter 3 we see what he says to Nicodemus. It's, 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 it's not just to be baptized. The verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And you know when some people think they have the answer, how they ask the question, you can, you can just hear it in their voice, you know, how they can ask the question. What kind of thing is that? What, what kind of thing are, are you telling me? 
somehow that does not jive. But Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. There is a process. There is a process. There's no short-circuiting the process. And that is one of the fundamental things that we have to believe in this doctrine that was delivered to us, that there is this process. And this process works. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. So marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. Don't be fussing over it. Don't be wondering too much about it. Don't be trying to flesh it out too much because that which is born of flesh is flesh. But that which is born of spirit is spirit. Some of the things that we try to understand and try to put the, the, the meaning to, we do not understand. We will never understand. But the Lord has the answer. And the answer is made clear to us when we are refreshed, when we are revived, when we are renewed in our spirit. Hallelujah. So the new life to the, to, to, to the birth not just the flesh, but it's a spirit birth. And we thank God that he has made a way for us. Everybody, everyone, everyone. He did not disqualify anyone in this. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the spirit. He didn't say some people. It's available to some and not to others. Everyone is available. That includes you. He said, whosoever surely meaneth me. Whosoever meaneth me. Does that whosoever, do you appropriate that? Do you take that for yourself today? That that whosoever will may come is for you? Whosoever wants to receive this new life is for you. This new life, repurposed life, renewed life is for you. Whosoever wants to manifest, because we don't just have these things in us. The Lord does not just pour it into us that we might say, oh yes, I've got it too. Thank God I've got it too. It's the Holy Ghost I mean. But we have the Holy Ghost that it might do something in us, that it might do something through us, that it might be manifested through us. Hallelujah. The way we live, the way we conduct ourselves, the way we do things, the Holy Ghost makes that difference. Hallelujah. That enabling power within us is the very breath of God himself. And that breath of God, we say, breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with power and new. Then that, then, then that breath will be able to renew us and revive us and refresh us. That we can say, revive us again. Fill his heart with thy love. May his soul be rekindled with power from above. Hallelujah. Find the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thine the glory. Revive us again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give God thanks that he's still reviving. He's still refreshing. He's still renewing. Lord, renew me. Lord, renew me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If I'm living too much in the flesh, Lord, help me, Lord Jesus, to make that transition. Help me to put that balance in my life with the Spirit. Because yes, I'm going to be in the flesh while we are here in the flesh. We'll be exposed to certain things, but Lord, 
Let your spirit be real in me. May that breath, O oh God Almighty, fill me. That is what is going to really renew us. We need to realize that his word, that through his word, his word transforms. The word of God transforms. That is what is going to renew us. That is what's going to refresh us and revive us. So when we are born in of water, we have to now take on the added portion of the word, of getting the word in us that is going to revive, that's going to transform. That's going to cause that renewal. Word empowers. That empowering word is also part of our renewal. Renew me, Lord. I'm not able to do it by myself. But you are able to do. Hallelujah. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Old things are passed away. I'm born again. More than a conqueror. That's who I am. I'm a new creation, I'm a brand new man, I'm a new creation, I'm a brand new man, old things are passed away, I'm born again, more than a conqueror, that's who I am. I'm a new creation, I'm a brand new man. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, you made a way. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Lord Jesus, you made a way. You made a way for me be renewed, to be revived, to be refreshed, to be repurposed. Hallelujah. And I thought that I was worth nothing. Then Lord Jesus, you said whosoever will, may come. I made my choice forever to walk with Christ my Lord. You too can make your choice today to walk with Christ your Lord. He is going to give you what you need to go through. He will not sell you short. He will not give up on you. He will not abuse you. The Lord is well able to take care of you. I will say, you know what, to him who is able. Yes, he's well able. He's a renewing God. And he'll renew your mind today. Won't you give him a chance? Won't you give him an opportunity to renew you, to refresh you? The time of refreshing is now. Jesus Christ is well able. Hallelujah. Make that decision today. May this be a very special day in their life. Yes, Lord Jesus. Have you any room for Jesus? Have you any room for Jesus? He said, He who bore your load of sin. As he knocks and asks admission, sinner, will you let him in? Somebody needs to make that decision today. Somebody needs to say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I have room for you today, Jesus. Room for pleasure, room for pieces. But for Christ the crucified, not a place that he can enter in the heart for which he died. Thank you, Jesus, for making a way. 
Have you any room for Jesus? He who bore your load of sin. As he knocks and asks admission, Sinner, will you let him in? Room for Jesus, King of glory. Haste and now his word obey. Swing your heart's door widely open. Bid him enter while you may. Room for pleasure. For Christ the crucified, not a place that he can enter, in the heart for which he died. So, room for Jesus, King of glory. Is there someone today, viewing online or in the sanctuary today, who have been convicted by the word 
mind and renewal. Someone, perhaps, who had not thought about it long enough or deep enough. Now you have no time for Jesus. No room for Jesus, no place in your life for Jesus. Hallelujah. And in your search for the real meaning of life, you may have excluded him or not included him in your pursuit of life. Hallelujah. Just for the next few minutes, we give you a chance today. If you have not made Jesus Christ Lord of your life, if you have not accepted him, as the scripture says, repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus, for the remission of sin, and you too shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, your children, your children, children, and as many as the Lord our God shall call. If you have not yet have that experience of the born again, that born again, baptized in the name of Jesus, filled with the Holy Ghost, after that you have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord, this is the chance to do it. If you're in the house and would like to come to the altar, you can come. If you're at home or at work and you're viewing online and not sure how to do it right now, by simply confessing that you are a sinner, hallelujah, and that Jesus Christ died for your sins and accepting the work that he's done for you, in a simple prayer right now, you can receive Jesus Christ as Lord of your life. Then after that, you can seek water baptism in the name of Jesus according to Acts 2, 37 and 38. Hallelujah. If you need help or guidance, please call this number 321 914-7079 and we'll be happy to give you some assistance or guidance concerning your conversion your renewed mind hallelujah we're going to be praying for you right now we ask everyone especially if you need to make Jesus Christ Lord of your life to bow your heads wherever you are Ula Baha mighty God everlasting Father your words declare in your own words all souls are mine we know all souls belong to you Lord those that are lost belong to you at this moment as your spirit search searches throughout the entire world, Lord, for someone who wants a renewed mind, a renewed heart, a renewed soul, to save them from condemnation, from death and hell. We pray right now, O Shaba. That your word will grip someone, Lord, and that somebody will turn even as we speak the word. I pray, O oh God, for release of power. I pray right now that you'll deliver someone from the oppression of satanic forces. The ruler, Hakusha of darkness, now, Ushaba, by your anointing, Lord, destroy that yoke that is yoking someone 
Those who are imprisoned by sinful habits, addictions, Lord. Hallelujah. Want to get out, Lord. But finding it difficult. We pray now as we come in agreement, Jesus, that that person right now was made up his or her mind to cut loose from their sinful ways. That it be done now, Jesus. According to their faith, Lord, and according to your word, Lord, hallelujah, deliver that person now, Jesus. Hallelujah. And stretch forth your hand, your arms, Lord, and reach out for that person to bring them close to you, oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, God, that you save them now, Jesus. Thank you for doing it, Jesus. Thank you for your word today. Encouraging us, Lord God, to seek for that renewal that is necessary for salvation now and for the future. Thank you for doing it, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for rescuing the perishing. Thank you for restoring the backsliders, Lord. Thank you for healing somebody right now from pain, from distress, Lord. Thank you. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus. We ask these mercies in your mighty, holy, sweet name, Jesus Christ. As we put our hands together and we celebrate the goodness of Jesus. Hallelujah. What he's doing right now for that person in this building or at home and work. That person, hallelujah, will receive it. Jesus Christ is Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You may be seated for a few. Thank you, Elder Bannon. Thank you.